Hey there, everyone. Daniel Lowry with Anti-Siphon Training, back with another episode in our Networking Fundamental Series. And today is going to be awesome because we're going to take a look at some file sharing protocols because we love sharing files. So much so that we've developed a, a veritable cornucopia of <laughs> protocols that allow us to share files. We are not going to go through that laundry list today. We're going to hit some of the highlights, some of the, uh, the big dogs on the block. And maybe even uh, play around with them a little bit, but we will uh, give some honorable mentions here at the end of the uh, episode. That said, let's jump into it, shall we? Let's start off with FTP, the File Transfer Protocol. That's right. If you need to transfer files, well, we've got a protocol for you. It's called the File Transfer Protocol. It's amazing. You're going to love it. It uh, slices, it dices, it makes julienne fries. But no, no, no. What it does is it very simply and very easily allows you to transfer files. It's a server service that you can stand up and it's extremely useful for doing this very thing. Let's jump in and see what I'm talking about. So I have an FTP server up and running and to connect to it, I just need to get into my terminal and use the command FTP. And this works with Windows as well. So if you're working in a Windows terminal uh, or command prompt, you can do the exact same thing that you're seeing here. So FTP, and then I give it either the domain name or the IP address. In my instance, I'm going to give it an IP address. I hit enter and it says, hey, I'd like to connect to that. What is it? What's the, what's the username? And it's it, it thinks it's what my username is for this system. That's why it's throwing it in there. But I can change that here and I will give it the actual username. I'm just using Metasploitable2, MSF admin. There we go. I'm a horrible typist. And then give it the password, MSF admin. And then you can see that I have logged in successfully. And now I have the ability to start messing, or I can upload, download files. I can, I can have a lot of fun, but transferring files. If I do an LS, I can see there's files in here. And if I want, I can even, let me open up another terminal here. And let's make a file. Let's echo, this is a great protocol. FTP for the win. I'll say FTP, FTW. FTP for the win. Bam. And then I'll just put that into a file called file1.txt. And now if I cat file1.txt, I've got it. Great. Excellent. But now I can come back over here and I can type in put file1.txt. And if I do an LS again, and I get rid of this, you can see there's file one right there, right? So I have the ability to put it. If I didn't have file one, this time we'll split it this way. Let's go this way here. You know what, whoopsie daisy, rm file one. Oh no, it's gone, whatever will we do? Well, we can just get that file from the file server and come back down here, do an ls. Oh, glory be. It is back. So there you go, file transfer protocol. Great protocol, runs on port 21 for those of you keeping score at home. And it's it's a really good tool to be able to move data around really easily. Most of the servers that are out there are fairly robust and helpful and easy to install and get configured and up and running. And you're off to the races. So a lot of fun stuff there with FTP. So that said, let's move on to another protocol that helps us do some file sharing. And hopefully that term file sharing is something you're familiar with, that you're going, you know what? I know a bit about file. I've shared a file before, especially in that Windows operating system, right? And in the Windows operating system, we use something called SMB, server message block. I believe that's the, yeah, server message block. That's what that for. And it runs on ports 137, 138, and 139, if I'm not mistaken. And it also uses port 445. It's a fairly robust protocol. It has a lot of things going on underneath the hood, but that's what enables us to share information in our Windows operating systems. Let's go check it out. Here I am in a Windows server. If I open up a file, right? I've got all sorts of stuff here. I open up, I mean the folder, the uh, file explorer is what I meant to say. But if I open that up and I go to something like uh, documents and in here, I got nothing, it's empty. And I can go in here and I can say new folder and I can give that folder a name. If I right click it and say rename and I'll rename it to, I don't know, fun stuff, right? Fairly simple. Now all I have to do is right click on that, go to properties. And from there, I've got a 
sharing tab right there. Fun. We go to advanced sharing. Now you do have this network file and folder sharing, which you can use. It's, it's not as robust as the advanced sharing. So I typically just use that. So I go to advanced sharing. I hit share this folder. I have a share name. So I, if I want to change that, I can, it can be different than what the file or the folder name is. So just keep that in mind. But typically most people, at least in my experience, we don't really change it. We've named it correctly. And we're just going to stay with that when it comes to the share name as well. You can add comments, you can change permissions. So if I wanted everyone to have full control, heck yeah, YOLO, <laughs> apply and hit OK. And then I'll just hit OK here and then close. And now this has been shared. If I wanted to, I could open that share by going to run and uh, just down here in the type here to search area which used to be the run box, but that's why, so I still call it the run box. So I do backslash backslash, give it the IP or server name in which the file share is located on. This one is win 2022 SVR, and then give it a backslash. You'll notice a bunch of file shares have popped up and there's fun stuff right there. I click on that and I'm in. You'll notice it's showing it as network win server 22 fun stuff and not like what we have over here where it's this PC and documents fun stuff. And if I put something in fun stuff, so let's create that new text document and we'll call this uh, super fun because why not? Super fun. Bada bing, you'll notice over here, it shows up as well. So fairly, fairly easy to use. Now that's not the only way we can do this. We can also do this stuff from the command line. So let's let's close all this graphical stuff down. We've got a terminal right here. And let's start messing around with being able to use the command line. Lots of uh, great capabilities in here for us to be able to do this. And you can actually just kind of like um, do dir. Yeah, dir. So just, just like you would a normal directory search, but give it the file share path. So slash slash, right? This was win... S, uh, I'm sorry, win 2022 SVR. So the server name or the IP address should also work. So I should be able to put like a 127.0.0.1 or whatever my IP is. I think it's one, I, you know what? I Oh, I think I do know what it is. I think it's 10.10.10.200 and then slash uh, fun stuff. And look, there's our super fun.txt file right there. Right? So very, very cool. We can still work with that. I can just easily uh, spin that up. But one of the things we typically end up doing when it comes to Windows file share using SMB is creating a file share. Uh, we map a drive. It's called a mapped drive where I don't have to dir and give it all that information of the IP or the host name and the actual share uh, name to go along with it. That's a lot to go with. Well, what if I just mapped it once and just shows up as a drive on my PC? That could be great. So what we do is we come in here. Now we can do this using the terminal. Here we use the net use command. And with net use, you give it a drive, a drive letter. A lot of times the example is going to be with Z. So Z colon. And then you'll say, um, I think you got to give it then the server. Uh, so all this information up here like that. So if we wanted to, we would do whack, whack. And this one is called win 2022 SVR and then backslash whatever it is. So we had fun stuff right there. If you need to do a username, you can do that as well. You would have to do slash user colon and then give it the domain. So like domain and uh, username like that username but I'm already logged in, so I, I won't need that. If I don't have permissions to this, I would also need that there as well. So, but I already have permissions because this is my server. I'm logged in, it sees what I've got. I can just map that and the command has successfully uh, completed. And now I just do Z colon and look, it's changed the prompt. I do DIR and there's all my stuff. Now, if I want to get rid of you, this, I can do net use, net use Z colon, I think it's slash delete. Is it okay to disconnecting? Yes, it's still being used. Go for it. I don't care. And now it was successfully deleted. So I, I would need to change out of here. That's what it was complaining about because I was still in the Z directory, but now it's gone. And if I do Z colon again, 
you'll notice can't find that drive. Now that's how we do this in the terminal. So if you need to script something out or something like that, that could be super useful. But normally what we're going to do is we're just going to go searching for that, that drive again, not the drive, the, the share folder and do backpack backslash backslash, give it the name of the server when 2022 SVR, then backslash, we're going to go with fun stuff, but I'm going to, instead of clicking on it this time, I'm going to right click on it and you see, I've got map network drive right there. Click on that. This dialog box shows up. You can choose your drive letter. I can make it S or R or whatever I like. You notice it has the folder. It asked me, do I want to reconnect on sign in? Do I need to use any different credentials? Once I got all that figured out, I click the old finish button. And now I should have a drive letter of Z, right? So if I go into network or is it uh, this PC? Yeah. Oh, there it is right around that region. So let me get this over here. Let me scroll this out. And there it is. Fun stuff takes me right to where super fun is. And now I can add all sorts of information, save that, control S, close that down, come back in later. I can, anybody that has access to this drive can now manipulate that system. Now, the cool thing about server message block is that if you are working in a Linux system, they did a little hackeroo and they made a thing called Samba. And Samba is kind of a hacked version of the SMB protocol, which allows us to use Linux machines to connect to Windows shares. Very cool, right? You can even map the drives using CIFS, but we're not going to go that far, time being what it is. I just kind of want to get you an idea of what's going on here. So let's jump in. Let's show you just really quickly to how to do this. Now that we've got uh, FTP out of the way, I will exit out of here and I will exit out of there and clear the screen. And from here, we're going to use the SMB client, like so. And to get to the share, we need the exact same information. A little bit different, though, is instead of two backslashes, we need four. And instead of one backslash for the share name, you need two. That's literally the only difference that I've come across with as far as this, at least practically. So if we go in here and we give it the, uh, well, I'll give it the IP address because I don't think I have DNS on this, but I'll do 10.10.10.200 backslash fun. Oh, two backslashes, fun stuff. Hit that. It's going to ask me for a password, but it's asking me for the Kali name, right? So I've got to give it a username. So let me control C this. And if you don't know what to do with Linux, it's all you got to do is SMB client. And usually dash H is going to give you what you need. And I want to say it's dash dash user, which is right there. And I'm going to need domain and username. I might not. I, I do know the domain name. So let, let's give that a whirl. Let's uh, let's give it a shot here. So we're going to connect with that. We're going to dash dash user equals. And, you know, I'm just going to go with administrator because that's what I'm logged in as over there. And I do have the credentials for that. If I type that in, it is giving me the work group administrator, which should be good because I have both of those uh, usernames and passwords. So let me put in my password. And there you go. I can do an LS and there is super fun right there. I can also do a get of super fun.txt. And when I'm done, I can exit out. I do an LS and oh, look, there's super fun.txt right there. I can cat super fun. There's all the information that we put in it. So highly <laughs> uh, uh, secret and good, good thing. We kept that a secret place and that it does bring up a really good point just really quickly. I know we're going to do a whole episode on security and networking, but you know, don't put sensitive information out there with loose permissions, non-encryption, that kind of stuff. So just be aware that that is the case. So there you go. We've looked at FTP. We've looked at SMB and both windows and Linux. Very cool things. I kind of just want to like hit the highlights, the also rans, the honorable mentions that are out there, that's going to be things like uh, like NFS, network file system. You can actually mount network drives or an actual file system like your C drive or your Linux root drive or wherever you like. Mount the whole thing across the network, giving me network access to that drive as if it were local. Very cool one. There's TFTP as well, the Trivial File Transfer Protocol. A little bit different, a little more uh, high-speed, low-drag, stripped-down version of FTP. Really good for just quick transfer of a single or uh, some files. A lot of times you'll see this used in routers to upload 
and switches to, for uploading and downloading their configurations. Very, very useful thing. There's also SCP, which we use with SSH, a secure copy. Very, very cool. We can actually take a look at that if I wanted to. I can do, let's see here, let me clear this, SCP. And if I have a file like, what is that, that uh, superfund.txt, and I wanted to put it on a server that I own that has SSH running, because this is a part of the SSH protocol, I can do, um, let's see, what is my ID, Lowry at uh, 192.168.1.1. 157, if I'm not mistaken. Then you do a colon and you tell it where you want it to save. And that's going to be at home slash D Lowry. And that looks good. Put that there. Hit enter. It's going to ask me some questions. I've never logged in with this before. So I just hit yes. Ask me for the password. Type that in. And look at that. It has successfully been transferred. I can then SSH in and manipulate the file or do whatever. So if you need a really secure way of copying files back and forth, there's also secure FTP, which is, a, uh, right, or FTP secure. It's a different file. <laughs> it's a different thing. So pick the one you like the most and go with that. HTTP is actually a file transfer protocol. Isn't that funny? The hypertext transfer protocol. We transfer files using get and put and post and all that other fun stuff. So use all those HTTP verbs to be able to move files from one place to the other. You can easily just spin up a Python HTTP server and download files using wget or curl or something like that. And then just output that file into where you would like it. Bada bing, bada boom. You got yourself a little bit of file transfer fun and it is a great time had by all. Whew. Well, there you go, kids. Lots of file transfer protocols that are available out there for us. We love file sharing. It is a wonderful thing. And now hopefully you're a little more squared away and understand how some of those protocols work and some options that are available for you. That said, thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe if you got some value out of this video. You know what to do. Hit that notification bell to know whenever we release a new video, which we do on the regular. And you don't want to miss any of that content. Super amazing, super fun stuff. So we're always trying to put out content that is useful for you to gain skills and knowledge in cybersecurity and IT. So uh, definitely avail yourself of that. Join us in our Discord community. Follow us on LinkedIn. We are fairly active there. We've got a great community. We'd love you to be a part of it. So we hope to see you then. And until next time, everyone, have a great day.